with the research I've done uh, on why the fake news really matters. Um, it's an experimental study of political knowledge gained from the Daily Show specifically. Um, I was really interested in infotainment as the way it compares to hard news, and for this I define infotainment pretty basically as programs that are meant to entertain but can also inform. Uh, so taking a look at that, and specifically the Daily Show, um, from a uses and gratifications approach. The main idea there being that audiences will actively seek gratifications and that process drives media choice. Uh, traditionally, information and entertainment media have been kind of walled off. But within the last 30 years or maybe longer, with introductions of political satire, fluff pieces on the news, soft news in general, that sort of, sort of, excuse me, sort of started to erode. Uh, and that's not really all that surprising. Even early researchers in use of gratifications like cats argue that one medium can serve multiple gratifications. What becomes tricky, though, particularly with these infotainment programs like Comedy Central, is when the form and content of the programs of entertainment and information kind of bleed together. And The Daily Show is a really great example, like I've mentioned, is that Stewart's clearly an anchorman. You know, next to him he has his uh, graphic of what's going on, he's going through his story, uh, he has his live news reporters. Um, it takes place at a traditional news block late at night. Um, there's intro and outro theme music. It's branded like a news program. So when these things kind of come together, people have concerns about how it's going to affect knowledge. Um, one is that there people have just been really concerned that people are going to, audiences are going to abandon the news for infotainment programs. And that can be dangerous. Pew reports that decrease news consumption decreases political knowledge. No surprise there. Um, but what's interesting is Pew's also done analysis of audience of Comedy Central's fake news programs. Turns out they have higher political knowledge than viewers of any other single program, and they tend to skew younger, between 18 and 29. So based on that, I hypothesize that young viewers would be heavier uh, viewers of The Daily Show when compared to nightly national network news. There's also a bunch of potential effects on learning. Um, a lot of studies have showed that there is the potential, really, to learn from political infotainment. Um, Bain has gone so far as to say that The Daily Show could represent new critical journalism because it provides context that you don't get on regular uh, news. And Nabby and, and some other researchers have argued that humor actually can increase message processing because it requires uh, higher levels of mental involvement. So based on that, I, I'm arguing that, or proposing, that young adults will learn more from The Daily Show, they actually will learn from The Daily Show, and they'll learn more from The Daily Show than they would from hard news. So in order to test that, I used a pre-test, post-test, quasi-experiment with a non-random sample, non-random convenient sample of 150 uh, undergraduates. Uh, the average age was 20, 86% um, were female, and it skewed slightly Republican at 54% with political affiliation. Uh, I randomly divided these groups into four cells. One watched a single episode of The Daily Show. Uh, another experimental cell watched a single episode of the NBC Nightly News. One cell watched both, and the other served as a control. Uh, I chose the NBC Nightly News in particular because Stewart and Williams are the most similar when you look at it, uh, the, the, main, the big three news net, uh, anchors. Uh, they're both white, they're both male, they're similar in age, they have been tenured on their programs approximately the same time. And I also thought that the nightly news served as a good program for comparison because they're both 30 minutes long, um, they're both looking at the same daily window because the daily show tapes at roughly the same time that NBC, the nightly news airs. And I chose to uh, the same day of the program, September 18th, 2012, so they're both looking at again, the same window. So they're likely to cover the same things. The main difference should be the entertainment aspect of the Daily Show versus the information aspect only of news. Uh, so for the pretest, I took an 11 item political knowledge test that Pew had done before as a baseline <coughs> measure. And I also asked about media habits that they had in the past week concerning these various programs. For the post test, I developed program specific knowledge tests. So based on the content on the Daily Show episode and on the NBC Nightly News episode, constructed 11 point or 11 item uh, multiple choice questions similar to what Pew had done and compared that to the control group which did, which did not see the programs. I also used the gratifications obtained of scale that was done by Paul Green, uh, Rayburn, and Winner in early and mid-1980s 
the idea being that programs are going to gratify various needs. The more they grant and, and measuring uh, whether or not what needs they gratified and how many. Um, so what I found, I, I did a manipulation check at the end for the results using a chi-square test. It turned out to be significant at the .001 level. So the manipulation tended to work. People that watched the Daily Show only thought they watched only entertainment program. People that watched the news thought they watched only information program. People that watched both thought they watched both. So the manipulation seemed to work. Uh, and there were also no significant, statistically significant differences in the pretest knowledge scores among groups. The average was roughly 8 out of 11, and there being no differences, it turned out to be statistically significant differences turned out to be good for comparison purposes. Uh, that said, I was forced to reject the first hypothesis that young people would watch The Daily Show more often than the news. Just simply didn't find much evidence for it. Uh, on average, people reported watching The Daily Show 0.3 times in the prior week, The Colbert Report 0.27 times in the prior week. Only 1.3% of, uh, of the sample reported it at late night comedy as a primary source of political news. There just weren't enough differences between that and uh, not, uh, any, any type of news, really, to, to make that. The other two hypotheses, however, were, were pretty well supported. I used one-way ANOVA tests and found uh, both significant uh, differences at the .001 level from knowledge gain for people that watched The Daily Show and people that didn't, so comparing the control. So people that watched only The Daily Show uh, compared to control group scored an average of uh, 4.38 higher on that 11 point scale. When you incorporate the Daily Show and the news, they scored an average of 4.88 higher. Uh, so people clearly tend to pick up knowledge from what they're watching. Uh, the same was also true for the news. So if you took a look at the news, uh, the NBC portion compared to the control, again using an ANOVA 0.001 significance. Uh, compared to the control, 2.45 more watching only the news. When you combine it with the Daily Show, 1.75 more compared to the control. So it appears that when you look at that 4.3, you know, at 4.38 to 2.45, people are actually picking up more from the Daily Show than they are from watching the news, which is kind of interesting. And then when I pulled in those gratification scales, measuring you know how much, how many needs, how well were things gratifying what they expect from television, uh, it turned out to be a reliable scale with an alpha of 0.88, and there were moderate correlations between political knowledge picked up from The Daily Show and gratifications obtained uh, at the .05 significance level had a correlation of .4. There was no such correlation, significant correlation for, the, for watching the news. So it turns out having your gratifications obtained affects knowledge for infotainment, but not so much for the news. So what is, does all that mean? Uh, first, I was trying to figure out why I didn't have the first hypothesis met, and I think part of the answer is the fact that the sample doesn't represent the audience as well as it could for The Daily Show. Uh, Pews shows that the audience for The Daily Show is roughly 54% male, I've got 86% female in this sample. So I ran uh, some independent samples t tests that showed unequal variance between the genders at a .05 level. Uh, on average, uh, men report watching the Daily Show 0.8 times more per week than women. So I think if you had a sample more representative in terms of gender, you might see that effect pop out, but that wasn't the case here. Nevertheless, people do tend to learn from watching the Daily Show, and even more so than from watching the news. And I think when you look at the idea that gratifications obtained correlate to that increased knowledge, uh, it shows that I think that's a reflection of uh, Navi's hypothesis that humor plays a moderating factor in that that being more, you have to be more engaged with that program in order to have that learning really occur. So I think that's support for that, that general uh, idea. Um, then the idea of, the other big argument that comes out is, is the news being supplanted by infotainment or is it being supplemented by infotainment? Uh, I think there's good evidence to say that supplemental effects are there considering that when you watch when participants watch both the news and the Daily Show, their knowledge of what they gained from the Daily Show was greater than what they would have if they watched only the Daily Show. So there's evidence that a supplemental effect could occur. But my take on it is that it's kind of a moot point. Because when you look at what people report in terms of are they watching the news or are they watching infotainment, there's really high correlation, 0.69 between The Daily Show and The Colbert Report in terms of high viewership, and there's moderate correlations among high viewership of the news 
but there's not a lot of correlations that indicate cross-pollination of the two genres. So heavy viewing of one doesn't seem necessarily predictive of heavy viewing of the other. So if there's not much crossover, the idea there could be a supplemental effect, whether or not it exists, probably doesn't operate very well in the real world. Um, there's limitations on this. Obviously, one is the sample that I talked about. Um, the mean age being 20 is not really capturing that whole audience of 18 to 29, the gender problem as well. So trying to find something more representative of what uh, late night uh, political infotainment audience is, I think would yield some more interesting results. As for future research, I think it'd be good to do a longitudinal study. Uh, uh, Navi as well as some others suggested that humor has a sleeper effect on political knowledge because you replay the joke in your head. It's more entertaining, you're trying to get it, and then over time you might repeat that joke. So you could actually pick up more knowledge in the long term, or at least retain it in compared to something just presented factually straightforward. So I think a longitudinal study would be interesting in that regard. Um, I also think it'd be good to examine some antecedents that predict viewing. Uh, Johnson and Kay have done a lot in terms of online credibility and how that predicts the use of blogs. Um, and given the fact that there have been numerous studies that suggest gratifications obtained from television and the internet are similar in, in many regards, I think that instrument would, would translate very well over to looking at The Daily Show and news and how does credibility play into whether or not you go to this for a source of political information or go to it at all uh, for entertainment. Uh, I also think expanding upon uh, the gratifications obtained measurement and looking at gratifications sought uh, would also be a, a very good uh, extension. Uh, Palm Green, Raver, and Winter have showed uh, pretty consistently that when you look, you can measure satisfaction uh, and it correlates very well with differences in uh, what you obtain from a source versus what you intended to seek. Um, if that difference is higher, people are more satisfied. And I'm curious to see if whether or not increased satisfaction might also lead to increased usage or learning as well. Um, so that's really what I found out with the study. Are there any questions?